hi everyone great to see you again uh, today's video really has dual purposes the first purpose is to talk about my brand new Benro tripod and geared head setup which I'm super excited to discuss with you I haven't yet used it this is the first time I'm gonna take it out in the field so it's really excited to see how it actually performs and the second purpose for today's video is just behind me down in this valley here there's a really kind of obscure hidden little footbridge that literally sits in the middle of nowhere and I'm really intrigued by it I've never seen any proper photo, like landscape photography images taken of this bridge uh, I don't know anyone who's visited there I have found no clear directions on how to get there all I know is the bridge exists and it's somewhere down this direction so today's video is going to be a little bit of exploration to see if I can find this bridge and see whether it actually holds any photographic potential um, so yeah, I really don't know what to expect to be honest, it's kind of a step into the unknown, both tripod wise and uh, terrain wise. So I'm going to head on down that way and uh, let's see what we uh, stumble across. Found it, there's the bridge, you can just see it behind me there, quite small. But what a remote location this is, just, it's just in the absolute middle of nowhere, there's no footpaths, there's no nothing here, just crazy, so I'll take you, take you down here. Um, oh, it's always reassuring isn't it when you go to a brand new location and you're greeted by the carcass of an animal. Yeah, really, really settles those nerves doesn't it about coming out into the wilderness by yourself. <laughs> But yeah, look at this bridge, absolutely amazing. Looks really, really old, doesn't it? Beautiful. So I'm gonna have a little wander around this bridge, see if I can find any compositions, which to be honest, looks pretty limited the scope for them. I think it's pretty much either this side or that side. And um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll try and put the new tripod through its pace, hopefully get a few images in the process. And then um, later on in the video, I'll, uh, I'll discuss a little bit more about the exact new tripod setup I've gone for. Okay, I've found my composition. Now, as picturesque and as beautiful as this quaint little bridge is, it's actually really limiting to shoot from you can either shoot from the other side or this side that's pretty much it i feel and um, because the sides of this valley are quite steep and really you kind of want some water flowing through your shot to kind of add some context to the actual location i think um, i tried shooting on the other side and it just didn't work the compositions didn't really hang together but this side works a lot lot better but it's just a question of how close you get to the bridge. If you get too far away from it, then the bridge kind of felt insignificant and quite small. And then you start to get vegetation kind of protruding into your shot, which was quite distracting. So for me, I needed to get quite close to it. And by getting close to it and shooting kind of in a portrait composition, it allows me to get the full arch of the bridge here. A little bit of sky above, not too much. But importantly, you can see this little waterfall that kind of flows right in between the bridge. It allows me to capture that. And I think as a portrait composition, it works quite nicely, I think. The main challenge that I've got here though is light. You can see the sun is kind of up in this direction. So I'm not shooting directly into the sun, but it is kind of coming in from the side, which is kind of diminishing the contrast in the scene and causing some lens flaring issues. So it's not ideal, but kind of really because of the geography of the area you're kind of really restricted I mean I'm shooting south kind of south here pretty much so this side of the bridge here is never going to be illuminated by light I'm, it's never going to be perfectly lit I'm always going to be shooting in or towards the sun um, pretty much most of the day and because the sides of the valley here are so steep this bottom of the valley here it pretty much stays in shade for the majority of the day I mean it's about 11 o'clock 11 a.m. now and the Sun is only just starting to reach the bottom of the valley here 
Um, so you can see that you're never going to have great lighting on this bridge. But I don't see it too much as a problem. If anything, I quite like that I'm shooting this with that kind of shade and overcast at the moment. That overcast kind of even light. I think it works quite nicely. I think if we actually had harsh light coming in here, I think it would totally really destroy this scene, to be honest. So the key to making this shot work is actually my new tripod. Nice tie in there. The, the length of these legs on this new tripod means that I can actually fully extend them down into the plunge pool of this waterfall here and essentially position the tripod out over the middle of the river. You can see the third leg is at a low angle coming back onto the bank to anchor it but it allows me to get the camera out to a location that I could not get it to. That is too deep for me to wade into. It will go way over my welly. So quite, quite pleased already that the, the new tripod's coming into its own because my previous tripod, the legs are nowhere near as long as this. So this shot probably wouldn't have been quite as easy or indeed possible with my older tripod. So quite pleased already. It's a very precarious shot. Uh, I had to really make sure the tripod was fully anchored before committing the camera to it, but it's actually quite secure. In terms of settings for this shot, it's actually relatively straightforward. I'm shooting at f11, um, focusing in for the bridge about here, which is giving me pretty good depth of field through there. I don't think I need to focus stack it. Uh, I've got ISO 64. Oh, we've got some light coming here now. Uh, I'm shooting at ISO 64, about half a second exposure so we can get some movement in the water down here but retain a bit of detail in it. And I'm shooting at 18 mil so I can get the full arch of the bridge and the waterfall below with a bit of sky at the top. Um, I've also got a circular polarizer on just to take a bit of the glare off these rocks just um, around the actual side of the river. And I'm also just switching my arm. It's quite tiring holding a camera for that length of time. Um, I'm also shooting with a free stop underexposure bracket. Quite extreme, I know, but the dynamic range here is extreme. I mean, the dark areas, the shade and shadow beneath the bridge are quite extreme. And then up here, because the sun is close to this area, it's very, very bright up there. So I've kind of dialed in that bracket just as a bit of an insurance policy to see if I can try and get any detail in that sky. I mean, it may not be entirely necessary, but I like to just shoot them anyways because it gives me good peace of mind. And um, if I do end up using both the exposures, then I'll just blend them together. And it will probably only be the actual sky that comes in from that underexposure. But uh, yeah, that's about it really, nothing more to it really. Quite pleased with this actually, because when I first arrived here, I really didn't think I was gonna get any images, but this image isn't too bad and dare I say it might actually be the first sort of proper landscape photography image ever taken of this bridge because it's that remote and that off the radar for the majority of people. having a mind if you can't change it. I've come to the other side of the bridge. I think I've found a composition that I totally missed before. I've just come in really, really super close to the bridge. I'm probably a meter and a half away from it. And you can see I've got my camera set up relatively low here, looking as the cascade goes down the waterfall the other side. I think it actually works fairly similar to the other side, but the only difference here is we're getting light. At the moment, we don't have any because there's quite a lot of cloud covered, but there's slight breaks in that cloud. At the moment, since I've been set up here, we haven't had one of those breaks come through. If we can just bathe this bridge and this foreground in a bit of light, this could be quite a nice image, and I think it might actually surpass the one on the other side, maybe. I'm not 100% certain though. 
setup is pretty much exactly the same. Um, the only difference here is I've dropped in a two-stop uh, ND filter because there's a lot more light on this side of the bridge as opposed to the other side of the bridge. So to get the same sort of level of exposure with half a second, I've had to stick that two-stop uh, ND filter in there to compensate for the extra light. But other than that, the setup is pretty much exactly the same. Polarizer, shooting super wide, uh, bat F11 again. So um, yeah, it's just a waiting game now to see if the light plays ball. Light is coming, here we go. Boom, got the shot. It looks so much better with light. It just makes all the difference. It makes the, uh, the stonework and the bridge there just pop out. It looks fantastic. pleased with the two images that I managed to get and I think it's been a pretty productive morning overall. This bridge is absolutely fantastic. It may not be the most picturesque or in the most stunning location but it's beautiful nonetheless. It's just got so much atmosphere and charm to it and I'm thoroughly happy that I decided to come here and find it because it, it just feels like a complete hidden gem to me. It's, uh, I haven't seen another soul all morning and I reckon I could camp here for a month and I probably wouldn't see another person other than sheep going by. It's just so unbelievably cut off and remote and hidden away. I kind of feel a little bit bad for even sharing its location because it's the kind of spot that if too many people walk over that bridge and stuff, it's, it's probably gonna perish. I mean, I don't know how old it is, but it looks pretty old. It's probably pushing 100 years, maybe even older than that. It's probably set up for herding animals across this river or shepherds, I would have guessed. But uh, yeah, absolutely stunning. Um, the other topic that I haven't yet covered is the tripod. Um, you've probably been wondering what the tripod is. It's a Benro TMA uh, 38CL and it's fantastic. I shared a video a couple of months ago where I kind of alluded to the fact I was looking for a new more sturdy tripod before uh, autumn and winter kind of arrived. This was my final choice and I have to say First impressions today are fantastic. It feels like a proper unit. Very, very well made and uh, really tall legs, just well built and a premium tripod for a not so premium price, which is always nice. I'm not gonna review it today though. I need to spend longer with it to give you any kind of real sort of reliable thoughts on it. But first impressions are exceptionally good. And probably the more important thing to talk about is actually the, um, head choice. Now I've been doing landscape photography probably for about 11-12 years now and I've used ball heads the entire time but recently I've kind of become curious about geared heads and I think the seed was planted in my head when I went to the Isle of Skye earlier this year and I was with a mountain guide who used this exact gear head and he swore by it and my impressions of it were pretty good so I kind of thought recently, you know what, I'm just going to take the plunge and try and use it. Give it a good six months, see how I find it. And um, I have to say, first impressions are, it's fantastic. It's really well made. The, uh, the actual model is the Benro GD3WH, if you're interested. It's, uh, it seems really well made and it's just fantastic. I think in my head, it's going to make lining up composition so much more easier because on a ball head you're trying to line up all three sort of axes all at the same time and you can get sort of droopage sometimes and in my experience I've found that it can be difficult to get compositions exactly spot on but with this I my first impressions today are that this is going to be exceptionally accurate at dialing in those compositions I'm just going to have to get my head around how all the different dials and stuff uh, work and instinctively know my way around them so that I can shoot as quickly as I could with a ball head. And I think that's going to take um, probably a number of weeks to actually do, to actually get used to it. But yeah, first impressions are very good. Again, I'm not going to give you a review of this yet. I haven't used it for long enough. I don't know whether I've made a wise choice or not going for a geared head. 
I don't see many landscape photographers use them, but there could be a good reason for that, so perhaps I've made a mistake. But yeah, I'm going to give it a good few weeks and then I'll come back to you with a separate video, kind of focusing specifically on this, I think, because I think it's, uh, it's a topic well worth talking about. But um, yeah, that's about it for today. Thanks very much for watching. If you've got any thoughts on the images I captured or the location, pop them down below. And if you've got any experiences with this tripod or this geared head model from Venro or any geared heads, um, share them down below. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts on those. And um, yeah, that's about it. Thanks very much for watching. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please click that button below to see more landscape photography adventures just like this. See you all soon.